Hey, welcome back to the Mentored Engineer. This one is exciting. I'm pumped up about it. This is planetary gears. Planetary gears are crucial. Everybody uses them every day in your car. If you have an automatic transmission car, you have planetary gears and lots of them. Now there's a couple of cool things about planetary gears, but let's first talk about the terminology. All right, so planetary gear uh, consists of a sun and there's planets that revolve around the sun and they're held together with some sort of uh, fixture called a stator and then you have uh, a ring gear on the outside now this these all have teeth uh, interestingly enough a ring gear has internal teeth um, and that's it's kind of a cool thing okay so let's give a great example first we'll set some numbers uh, I'm saying that my ring gear has 100 teeth my planets have 25 and my son has 20. I have no idea if you could physically put them together and actually make them do that. Uh, so we're going we're gonna to use those anyway uh, and make sure they work. All right, so uh, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to say that something here needs to be fixed. All right, something is not going to rotate uh, because otherwise we just get wonkiness coming out of it. All right, so my first example, I'm going to say that this is fixed. All right, that's the stator. So what's gonna happen is I'm gonna drive my son. I'm gonna drive that clockwise. All right, this thing doesn't move relative to that. So these gears will uh, stay in the same position. So they're gonna go the opposite direction. And uh, as it gets up here, they're gonna pick this one up and it's gonna go that direction. All right, so let's just say my sun is my input and my ring is my output. Okay, so I've done that. And one thing you should probably be picking up on now is I can transmit three times the load I could uh, compared to what it was this. You know, the, the, the tangential force now exists at three locations. So one, two, three interfaces there, one, two, three interfaces on the outside. So I got three times the, the load. If I add another set of gears, four times. Uh, the other cool thing is that with these radial forces, uh, they tend to balance out so that I'm not putting any bending load on this shaft. Uh, if I go back to this, uh, if these gears are out, they're gonna cause each, each gear to push apart and that could lead to bending in my shaft, misalignment of the gears, uh, the gear's not meshing properly at all. Uh, so this allows us to uh, transmit more torque and balance our forces so we can have smaller shafts. <clears throat> now you notice here that um, these gears are actually going, uh, the input and the output would go opposite ways. Now what's the ratio here? So um, I could, I could find this out. Um, so my ring to planet is 100 to 4, or 120, 100 to 25. All right, so that reduces down to 4, and then our planet to sun is uh, 20. And we would just multiply those two together, and we get 5. Now we could come up with that a little bit more simple uh, by saying it's 120. <clears throat> and we just have to note that they are going the opposite way. Okay, so uh, I mentioned balance forces and I think I just wanna reiterate that one more time where uh, our radial forces are equal here and if all these gears are spaced uh, exactly the same uh, distance apart angularly, so in this case we want them all 120 degrees apart, 360 degrees in a circle, we divide that by three, you get 120. All right, those forces um, that are forcing the gears apart <clears throat> are going to balance out because it's going to be equal here, equal there, equal there. Uh, and then same thing over here. We're going to have them equal in all directions. All right, so great advantage of planetary gears. Uh, the other cool thing is we'll, we'll do this in our next example. I'm actually going to fix this, and we're going to erase our arrows except for our sun. All right, our sun's still going the same way. 
by definition, that one has to be going that way. Uh, but uh, what's going on in between these two? This, this is not moving, so that is forcing this, the stator, to come this way. So now you know that our input shaft, the sun, and our output shaft, the stator, are going the same way. Uh, but what's the relative speed? Um, you probably do this by inspection. If this gear and this gear were the same size, it'd be going half the speed, and you'd be right. Uh, but let's get a little bit more mathematical, a little bit more technical about it. Uh, and let me explain that it's not actually the same, uh, although we are on the right track. Okay, so if I do my previous example, um, for every five times this sun rotates, it's going to go around that circle one. One time, okay? So, um, and we know by inspection that if that goes around five times, all right, these bigger planets are going to go around four times, all right? But since our stator only moves at half the speed of those planets, right, we only get that much there. This, twice the distance, this is the distance, all right? So I'm only going to get half of that which is two uh, revolutions for every five, all right? So essentially this moves at 40%. Or, uh, let, me, let me summarize this again. The sun, five rev. The planets, four revolutions. And the stator, Uh, is half that, which is two revs. All right, so two over five is forty percent. All right, and that's where we get that. Uh, so the cool thing about this is, is not only did I change uh, my ratio. Uh, so here I got a, a two and a half to one uh, output, but I got a five to one before. Uh, and it's the opposite direction. So I can do different things if I just hold this rather than this. Uh, I can hold the sun and make the stator go. Uh, there's a ton of different combinations you can do with this. You can have immensely reduced uh, speed ratios, you know, like 100,000 to one, uh, just by using um, several of these uh, in a row. You can have two different size rings tied together with two different planets and uh, stuff like that, where you can get uh, astronomically high uh, torque ratios and other things with these. So, uh, big applications with this. As I said in cars, you know, all right, a uh, car will have, you know, a, a, a brake holding this, and then it'll release, uh, and then grab the sun or grab the stator or, or whatever else. But you can get so many different uh, speed combinations and that's basically what is going on in your automatic transmission. All right, so I hope you could feel the enthusiasm on this one. This one gets me going because there's so many possibilities that you can do with this. Uh, so go explore, um, just do some simple ratios, just think through it. Um, everything is like a, a car going on a road where if the, the tire, as long as it doesn't slip, uh, so many revolutions equals so much distance on, on your ring gear. And as you can see, I was just jazzed up about this one. Uh, planetary gear systems are great. Uh, we use them in automatic transmissions, like I said earlier. And uh, just by holding different things in the system, you can get totally different responses. And uh, you can see here uh, from our example that you can get different ratios and you can also uh, get different directions. Uh, all by just, just holding this instead of that or whatever else. Uh, changing your inputs, changing your outputs. Um, so uh, please look this up, have fun with it, and uh, enjoy your studies. Thank you.